Heather lived life to the fullest and she was very passionate about everything she did when she was doing it. That's what Heather taught us is to keep the fight, keep the faith, always believe in yourself and never, never give up. She had such charisma. When she played golf, it was like a whole new world for everyone to watch her. She just made people around her feel good. Uh, she gave back. She was a giver. Heather, Heather Farr was a giver. Her legacy will be class, courage, and spirit. Heather and I started playing golf uh, at a very young age. She just had an affinity for it and pretty quickly had some success. When she was 12, she won her st first state amateur title, uh, a women's championship, and kind of took everybody by surprise and was beating players that were seven, eight years older than her, um, good players, players at Arizona State. She went on to, she played in her first LPGA tournament when she was 14. She was low amateur at the U.S. Open when she was 16, and I think finished 11th in the Open. Won three state high school championships, and along the way won two USJ championships, and just found success at every level that, that she had. And she fell in love with junior golf. I think that's really what sealed it for Heather, that that's what she wanted to do, because it was so much fun. And she loved to win and she loved to compete, but um, we both made some tremendous friendships along the way that I still have today, my friends from junior golf in my AJJ years. Um, we played junior golf together in the late 80s before we all turned professional, and she was extremely bright. I mean. She was the whole package, which was, which was really kind of funny because she was this little tiny 5'1", and you just couldn't believe she had all this energy and this enthusiasm for life and for, and for people she met and wanted to help. She was involved in every project. She was extremely fun-loving. She hung around the guys as much as she hung around with, with the girls. She just had an infectious personality. She was so together. Uh, she was a wonderful speaker. She was very articulate. She had her goals in mind. She knew what she wanted. and. She was a beautiful young woman. I was just so impressed with how she carried herself. She would be right there for you. She was just very generous in regards to that. I mean, you asked her to do anything, she would do it. She was very much a part of the student body. She went to dances. She did everything everybody did, but she at the same time was this world championship golfer. She just had an aura about her as a player. I don't know who to compare her to in this day, but she just, she just seemed to have it all together as a junior golfer. The way she dressed, the way she carried herself, it was amazing. And, and that's what really first attracted me to the AJJ because these kids were just so impressive and she was certainly one of them. She could go to any college she wanted to on a full ride. Back then I think she was offered 20 full rides at any major university. And she chose to stay home and, and um, in her years in A, she were very successful. and. All-American and, and winning more tournaments along the way and that's when she won the Pub Langs. I knew that that was someone that I really wanted to come to Arizona State and I knew that if she came to Arizona State that it would be a huge, huge hit for our program because of all the qualities that Heather, Heather had with her. Just being able to see every single day her work ethic, how she practiced, how she played, how she interacted with the other players. She was very involved when she was a player on the team here. She was very interested in who we were going to recruit. She was a very social, fun person, and she wanted to make sure that I was recruiting the right players. We won several conference championships when she was on the team. We also always would finish in the top ten at nationals. Uh, she was instrumental in that. Again, we were kind of rebuilding the program or just really starting the tradition of the program. She was a huge part of that. The small person who was 5'1 um, could, could take anybody on. And she was in a hurry to get to the tour and nobody could really understand why, but it just was her destiny. And, so she graduated from Xavier College Prep in three years and then went to college early and only stayed three years because she was ready to, she decided she was ready to turn pro. And after four years of playing the tour and loving it and each year having more success and, and being one of the, the strong young players on tour, she was struck with breast cancer at 24 and was told that, you know, 24-year-olds don't get breast cancer, and so unfortunately there was some time that was passed before she was diagnosed, which cost her valuable time. 
in her life. Uh, she fought for four years. She did ungodly treatments and everything in between to try to, to fight, to, to, to beat breast cancer. And time and time again, no matter what she did, it kept coming back and it, it took her at the age of 28. After bone marrow transplants and chemo and radiation of all kinds and, and she tried and she did, she faced cancer with the same determination that she faced her career and with courage and dignity and I think that's why she continued to have so many people follow her story because she did it with out a why me uh, thought. She did it as okay this is what I have to endure and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat it. When she was diagnosed with the cancer and she started going through treatment, you didn't see anything different in her. You saw even more so her fight and her determination. You saw in her, I'm going to beat this, I'm going to beat this. And that was a positive attitude that was just instilled in her. I swear to God, she was born with that positive attitude. There are 15 surgeries in all. I mean, a mere mortal would have given up, you know, way before that. She, she never lost touch, never lost faith that she was going to beat this disease and, and that's, that's what inspired me the most. She dealt with it so courageously and I remember several times when she was ill, she still came out to talk to the kids. I always liked to have her come and talk to the girls about what LPGA was like, what college life was like and she would come and I remember she would have you know the scarf wrapped around her head because the chemotherapy you know all her hair was gone she still didn't care she came out and she would talk to the girls and tell them what life was going to be like it was truly a sad day I will never forget that day when she passed away I think that people were so surprised when when she lost her fight because she convinced all of us that she was going to do it because really there had to that point there'd been nothing that Heather hadn't been able to accomplish that she set her mind to and uh, it was a really uh, brutal loss for all of us. What I learned from Heather probably saved my life. I was diagnosed four years after she died. I was 30 at my first diagnosis, and I was diagnosed again uh, in 2008. My prognosis is very good, and we learned a lot from Heather's struggle and catching mine earlier, and um, certainly how she faced it. I do my best to approach it with the same grit and determination and, and a never give up attitude and so I certainly rely on those qualities she taught me every day. You know Missy certainly has had her struggles uh, you know, with breast cancer and all sorts of issues and she's another one who's a fighter and she's gone through and at the same time she's still coaching uh, out at Arizona State no matter how bad she was feeling she was out there with the girls. I mean I think that maybe is a maybe a sign of the Farr family, that they just are all like that. They're, they're full of courage and full of spirit and full of love. And I think that's obviously typical of the Farrs. Heather's family, uh, her mother and father, were always there for her. And they were there, though, for her as a person. And then her sister, Missy, and her sister, Missy, was just all part of the ingredients of Heather and who she became, uh, who Missy became. I'm forever grateful for them for giving us this life because golf is a wonderful game that is for life and, and the people that I know and the, and the friends of Heather's and mine along the way are absolutely um, priceless because of this game and, and we wouldn't have it if it weren't for my mom and dad. Heather had a tremendous passion for, for life and living and having fun and enjoying the ride and um, even we could find humor even in the worst of days in cancer treatment that's just was Heather and and she's taught me a tremendous amount in my life Heather would not want to be remembered for being a breast cancer victim she'd want to be remembered for the wonderful things she did uh, on and off the golf course and and remembered for her great qualities that hopefully she continues to inspire other junior golfers